Hello YouTube, uh, welcome back to my channel and in this video I'll be giving you my final verdict on the brand new Huawei Honor 7. Now those of you who follow me on YouTube, you must have seen my videos, several videos in fact, which I have been posting uh, for the past one week. If you haven't, please do check them out. So in this video finally, I'm ready to give you my verdict and we will discuss the pros and cons about the Huawei Honor 7. So let's first of all start with the pros and the very first thing I want to talk about is the battery life on this phone. Now this phone has a 5.2 in screen uh, at full HD 1080p it's not a quad HD a full HD and I'm still a very big fan of full HD 1080p panels even though it's 2015 and every flagship phone is coming out with quad HD but uh, I'm still a fan of 1080p because firstly it doesn't affect the performance of the phone as much and also uh, the battery life doesn't suffer which most quad HD phones including the S6 and others are suffering so because of that a uh, full HD panel and a big huge uh, 3100 milliampere battery thanks to Huawei for that we have a phone which has got excellent battery life uh, with mixed usage you can get about four and a half to five hours of screen on time and if you're on Wi-Fi you can get uh, over five hours uh, close to five and a half hours of screen on time and in some cases maybe six if you're a moderate user uh, what I will do is I'll provide you a link down below uh, for my dedicated battery video which I actually made yesterday and I did upload it on my channel so please do check it out should you wish to see detailed dedicated battery video on the Huawei Honor 7 so if you are thinking of battery life you should not think about that at all in this phone you will never ever worry about the battery life on this phone it will last you even with the heaviest of use it will last you a full working day without any issues and the high silicon Kirin 935 octa-core chipset is very very efficient and with a big battery and a small screen there is no chance you will be able to finish this phone in one day unless you are buffering streaming or gaming then any phone would die eventually anyway Okay, the second thing I want to talk about which I like in this phone is actually the in-hand feel. Now, a lot of people have asked me this question before, how the Huawei Honor 7 is as compared to the LG G4 for instance or the OnePlus 2. And the phone, those phones have slightly bigger screens. Um, but I think in the case of Honor 7, the, the, the thing I like about this handset is it's quite slim as compared to those handsets. If you look at, for instance, uh, the LG G4, it has got a curved back, it's not flat as the Honor 7 is. So at times it can be slightly difficult to hold and especially that phone has got a a wider more width as well this one hasn't got as much width as compared to the LG G4 so when you're holding it in your hand it's easier to move your thumb across all over the screen all the way on top and it's quite easy on the LG G4 it's not too bad because as we all know G4's screen to body ratio is excellent and one of the best in the 5.5 inch category but still this phone feels a bit more uh, less on a bit less on the width sorry and that's why it's easy to hold in the hand uh, but the only thing that I would say is that it, at times it can be a bit slippery because it's a, obviously a unique Uni, uh, unibody uh, aluminium phone but the in-hand field say if you're coming from one of my subscribers asked me that he's got an Nexus 5 and he wanted me to see compare uh, how the, the, the in-hand feeling for this phone is as compared to Nexus 5 and I can tell him and everybody else watching right now that this phone if you're coming from a Nexus 5 or a Nexus 4 or even any 5 inch screen phone or a 5.2 inch screen phone this is extremely comfortable for instance I remember I used to have the Xperia Z3 that was also a 5.2 inch screen phone but that phone had huge bezels on top and bottom and side as well so at times Z3 was a bit difficult to handle in hand and it was quite slippery as well this handset, I think the, the overall aesthetics, the design principles and the in and feel is classic. It doesn't slip as much out of your hands as compared to the Xperia Z3, but in general it's a bit slippery, yes. But the in and feel as far as gripping the phone is concerned, moving your fingers and thumb across the screen, I think it's an absolute pleasure and you will actually enjoy the in and feel very, very much on this phone because it's, it has less width as compared to other flagship phones out there. Okay, the next thing I want to talk about is the UI. Now, a lot of people out there actually hate Emotion UI. I am not one of those people unfortunately I love Emotion UI I know it has got no app drawer uh, I know there are obviously things which do not, don't work in uh, our favor at times if you're going through the home screens like that you might actually find uh, it hard to find certain applications but the thing I like about this UI is that you can actually in the middle of the screen you can uh, you can just swipe your uh, finger down like that and then you can search for any app say for instance if I wanted to um, search for uh, for example I would say Skype yeah there we go and you type Skype and it should, even though I haven't got Skype installed on it but let's say pick something else for instance um, any native app we say pick up uh, let me have a look and see because I'm sorry I completely forgot so let's have a look say if I was looking for um, say CPU Z 
So if I was to go there, swipe down again, and type CPUZ, there we go, CPUZ comes up straight away. So um, this is one of the things where uh, life has been made a bit easier and clever thinking by Huawei that they knew that they're not giving people any app draw and with so many home screens at time people can get lost. That's why you just sort of swipe your finger down across from the middle of the screen, you search for an app and it comes up straight away. <clears throat> so as far as the US is concerned, I think it's very handy. It's got some wicked features like the voice wake up and a couple of uh, gestures and lots of stuff in there. But uh, the performance of the UI doesn't get affected. As you can see in the video, I'm moving across the different screens. Wherever you type in, whether it's the messages, whether it's phone calls, whatever you do, absolutely brilliant. The, the experience is very, very nice indeed. And there is no lag on this phone, surprisingly. And um, knowingly that Emotion UI is very, very heavy in nature and crammed with features still why we have optimized the Kirin 935 with Emotion UI and by the way I'm running Emotion UI 3.1 which is the latest available on uh, Honor 7 on the Honor 6 and Honor 6 Plus they're still running all the uh, old EMUI but this one has the latest EMUI 3.1 along with Lollipop 5.0 and performance will never be a problem on this phone of the week that I've used I've had no lag no issue whatsoever and everything has been very smooth very nice everything opens very very quickly with no issues whatsoever so i absolutely love the performance so any of you thinking oh swabi emotion ui is too heavy it's gonna lag it won't lag you will enjoy the performance there's enough power in the phone like i said the octa core kiran 935 the which is the most powerful chipset available from Huawei so far on any of their phones and also you have three gigs of ram that should be plenty for you to enjoy and in, uh, have any sort of multitasking and you will never ever compromise on performance from what i've seen so far so the UI is quite smooth, so don't worry, you have to worry about at all guys' performance. Performance-wise, this set is very at, at the very top of the list, not at the very top, among the best phones like the LG G4 and, and other top phones from from this year, is right in that same A-League and you will have no issues whatsoever. Now, I also want to talk about the cameras. The cameras are decent, the front camera is 8 megapixel and it also has a flash at the front which you don't find in phones that often. Now the back camera is 20 megapixel as you know and it's got the latest Sony IMX 230 sensor the camera is capable don't get me wrong and when it comes to um, uh, bright daylight and good lighting conditions the camera can take some really beautiful pictures but when it comes to low light the camera like many other cameras struggle and you will see a bit of noise come in as well but in general we have the two tone LED flash as well so if you keep the, the object at the right distance and take pictures with flash and at the right angle I'm sure you'll get decent pictures in most cases uh, as long as um, you keep your hand steady because it has no optical image uh, stabilization and also you have to make sure that the lighting conditions are good and then you will probably enjoy the camera now the front camera has got this flash and I wanted to do something special on this <laughs> with you right now I'm going to take, take all the lights off that I've got now and I specifically wanted to show you how the flash works during night time so let's take the lamp light off first of all I've got a lamp on top and let me also switch my room light off and just bear with me <coughs> There you go guys, so I've switched everything off now and let's turn the camera, the front camera on and you will see the flashlight will come on straight away, there we go. So in a pitch black room you can see the flash is powerful enough, it, you can see my camera, you can see almost uh, full, almost all of my face because I'm behind the camera and uh, and, and not fully in, the, in, in, in covering, not as close as you would be for a selfie for instance, that's why you can't see my face clearly but if I was to say move the camera just a little bit, you will see here that I would be... Uh, quite clear and visible in flash so let's take a quick photo I've got the beauty mode on that will enhance obviously the picture and the quality so let's take a quick photo and see how it does there we go now let's have a look at the photo as you guys can see in a pitch black room you can clearly read Sony and you can see so much of the detail you can see my cheeks see my nose see even see my eyes as well so if I didn't have the camera in front of me I would have been able to get more close to the, to the front facing camera and I would be able to get even a better picture so the front facing camera with this flash is an added bonus at this price point and you're not going to get this on any other phone as far as I can tell 
Um, so it's, it's even though it's a soft tone light, it's not like a flash, it's a soft tone light, but it's very, very beneficial. Even in the most darkest of rooms, you'll be able to get a very good picture. And uh, we don't see that even in flagship phones these days, the Samsung Galaxy S6, for instance, or the LG G4. None of them has got this tone flash or even other sort of flash. The last one I remember, I think that was the HTC. Um, Desire I, I think that had a front flash, but that was a, little, a while back though. Uh, the poor HTC obviously always gets scrutinized for some reason, even though they are always the first in innovation. But never mind. On the Huawei Honor 7, we have this front flash with the camera, and I think it does a beautiful job. Now, let me go back, sorry guys, and turn the lights on so that we can carry on. Okay, there we go. So, we are back on now with all the lights on and we can carry on. So as you saw the demo with the with the front facing camera and the flash, I think it's an absolute wicked and for this price, 250 pounds only, you are getting a lot for the front facing camera, especially with the front facing flash as well. Okay, one more thing I wanted to, in fact a couple of more things, the fingerprint scanner. Now I've done a dedicated video on the fingerprint scanner. If you want to know that in detail, uh, please, uh, I'll leave you a link and you can have a quick look uh, should you wish, but I will give you just a quick demo to see how I'll put my fingers underneath at the back and you see the phone will open straight away in my my personal opinion this is the fastest fingerprint scanner I've had on any phone so far I've had iPhones galaxies and everything different phone but this phone is the quickest when it comes to fingerprint scanner so well done to Huawei for putting the world's fastest fingerprint scanner on any phone so far so this is they have earned 10 out of 10 out as far as I'm concerned and that fingerprint scanner has got a lot more than just fingerprint scanning as well which you can find in my video and I will leave you a link uh, just down below also the call quality on the phone I often don't talk about call quality and people often complain to me don't speak about call quality the call quality in this phone has been has been one of the best I've had in any phone uh, I had the last the two phones I remember in on which I really enjoyed a good call quality was HTC One M8 and the Oppo R7 both had uh, excellent noise cancellation and they had very clear uh, voice um, uh, speaker from from to doing phone call uh, i've been talking to a lot of people over the phone on this phone and they've all said to me your voice is very clear and i could hear them clearly as well in fact the other way i was uh, walking back from work and i was going across a dual carriageway a main road a lot with lots of traffic and um, uh, i was able to clear hear, hear the other person very clearly and i was quite surprised to see even in the most noises of environment um the Huawei on seven noise cancellation uh, mic which is actually right there on top next to 3.5 mm jack just right there was able to give me um able to you know act promptly cancel all the background noise and i was able to hear the person very very clearly also you get this ir blaster on the left top side you can see this is also added bonus you're not going to find an ir blaster in a phone which costs you 250 very few phones in the world will have this so once again it's a bonus and i think it's beautifully done by huawei they've given you so much on this phone is simply amazing. You've got dual SIM, SD card expansion slot, front facing flash, 8 megapixel, 20 megapixel at the back. You've got an IR blaster, you've got noise cancellation mic. There's so much in this phone metal, build, aluminium. Seriously, for 250 pounds, I think it's probably, in my opinion, even if the Nexus comes out, the new Nexus, I personally think this will be the bargain of the year of 2015 and it'll be so hard to beat. Okay, uh, also, one more thing which I absolutely love in this phone is about, you know, you know when, when, you, when you get any phone like LG phone, Sony phone, any new phone, you always, there's no, these OEMs, when they release their phone, they have bugs. Like you've seen my LG G4 videos, when it came out, it had a few bugs. The Samsung Galaxy had some RAM management issues and stuff, things like that. All these phones come up with problems. This is one of the only, one of the only two phones which I never had the need to say that, that it's got some bugs. It's got it's got no bugs. The way Chinese have programmed the Motion UI, it is almost 100% balanced. And I laugh in saying that because the major OEMs like Sony, HTC, and Samsung, when they release their phones, within a month or two, you get updates. Uh, you know, trying to enhance the experience and get rid of the bugs. This phone had a minor update, one minor update, I think, and that was in the settings as well, just a few meg. But even before that update, which I did anyway forcefully but uh, there was no bugs there was no error there was no issue in this phone no wi-fi connection issues no call quality issues no restarts no freezing no lag nothing at all so the phone comes out of the box and you can start using it straight away without worrying about any of the updates even apple at times is not as good when apple phones come out people complain about battery life and this that and all that kind of stuff but this phone absolutely amazing no issues 
Oppo R7 is the other one which I had no issues with and also the Huawei Honor 7 no issues even without any updates this phone can go on and on and on I am totally surprised and shocked you expect Sony, Samsung and HTC to do that kind of job it's the minor OEMs, the new, new and upcoming brands which are setting an example it's a shame for the major ones by the way to be honest anyways okay so the price like I said is ridiculous and if you compare this with the Huawei P8 which is in fact the younger brother of this phone that phone is expensive and this is cheap still I can't figure this out if you go on bmall.eu forward slash UK you will see this phone has got a front facing flash it's got a bigger camera than the Huawei P8 P8 has 13 megapixel this has 20 megapixel this has a smart key button P8 has got no smart key button P8 has a small battery this is a big battery still this phone is 100 pound cheaper than P8 Huawei P8 Honestly, I don't understand because they're basically killing the, Huawei, uh, the P8's market and because this phone will be sold like crazy because like I said, more features, less price. Who the hell wouldn't want to buy a phone like that when you have when you have a cheaper price tag with more features on it. Also, I love the smart key button on the left hand side. This is where you can just launch your apps just by pushing it. You've got three actions to it. One press, double press and one long press. I've done a dedicated video on this guys so do please check out. I'll show you very quickly how it works. So I press the button once, my Facebook opens up. I press it twice, my YouTube opens up. I keep it pressed, my emails come up. Brilliant. Why can't any of the major OEMs come with this idea? Huawei, 10 out of 10, well done. Okay, enough about pros. Let's talk about cons before the video gets too long. Okay, the back camera, like I said to you earlier in the video, is 20 megapixel, but unfortunately it has got no optical image stabilization. So that results in pictures, especially when it comes to low light, uh, the pictures can be a bit noisy. But when, it, when, it, when, it, when the light is right and um, you've got a good, perfect lighting conditions, the phone will take some good photos. So it's good enough for social media like Google+, Instagram, Twitter, for instance, Facebook. You will enjoy those pictures up there on social media side. But if you expect a bit too much, especially in low light, you might be slightly disappointed with the camera. But the front camera compensates that with a front facing flash, tone flash. So it, it, if you are into selfies, you're going to love this phone. 8 megapixel camera with flash, even in the dark pitch black room, you can take photos like I showed you earlier. So it's a brilliant camera, not bad, but the back camera is a bit weaker. Okay, also uh, the phone speaker I wanted to talk to you about, which is at the bottom. And the, the left bottom grill actually is the speaker, just there. And the right one is just there for design purposes only. The speaker grill, the speaker is not the loudest. It's just average, I would say. Even though the pitch is nice, it's very clear and there's lots of treble, but there's not enough bass. So if you are the kind of person who wants to listen to music on your speakers, you might be slightly disappointed with that. But in general, uh, for watching YouTube videos and stuff, I think it's more than enough. And it's not that big of a problem. At least it's not at the back, it's at the bottom. So at least you can hear it when you're holding it in your hands, playing games or watching stuff. Um, I will also leave a, a link for the gaming video in, in, uh, uh, down below as well. And you, that will give you an idea how good the speaker is. Okay, also, this phone has got no app drawer on the software side. So some people might be disappointed. But then, it's not that big of an issue because you've got two solutions to it. Either you can go to Play Store and you can install Nova Launcher or any other launcher. So you'll have an app drawer straight away. Or you can swipe your finger like I showed you earlier in the video. But down bottom like that, look for an app and you can look for an app straight away. So you will never, be get, you, you will never get lost in UI. It's a very, very good UI and, it's, and the geeks out there, they would love this because so many features, like I said, the guys have done dedicated videos on features. I'll leave the links down below. Have a look and see. And if, the, if any of the link is not there, please go on my channel and have a look. I've done plenty of videos on Huawei Honor 7. And one last thing uh, I would say is uh, if you want to buy this phone, guys, make sure that you buy a case. Because like I said to you earlier in the video, it's made from unibody aluminium and you can just see the chamfered edges as well. So at times the phone can be a bit slippery. If you are indoors, if you've got a bit of hand sweat in your hands, you will be able to grip it rather easily. But when it comes to going out, your hands are cold and dry. The chances are that you will most likely drop this phone. So I would strongly suggest you to buy a case for this phone as the phone is made from single um, uh, unibody metal aluminium. So that's the also one of the cons. So guys, this is all the pros and cons of the phone. In general, um, I would say at the end, of which should you buy this phone? If you have 250 pounds, uh, I think yes, you should. And the nearest competitor, uh, competitor will be um, the OnePlus 2, I would say. And that's got a stronger hardware but then the oneplus 2 is a bit bigger in size some people don't like big phones it has no expandable memory and the 16 gig version obviously is cheaper but the 64 gig version is more expensive than, than the Huawei Honor 7 this phone has dual sim a micro SD card expandability and so much more on the phone I still think in my opinion even if the Nexus comes out this is gonna be the bargain of the year 2015 it'll be very very hard to beat 
So guys, if you like my video, like always, uh, please give it a thumbs up and please share my video guys as it helps. And also if you can please uh, hit the subscribe button, that will help me greatly. And like always guys, any questions about the phone, anything else, uh, please feel free to ask me in the comment section. I will be more than happy to help and I will see you in the next video.